Hello, in this video we're going to take a look at different types of subdivision within 3ds Max, different techniques you can use to subdivide and get good results. Let's start with the basics. Alright, we're going to select something here. Let's make it a little bit more interesting. Let's move this down here and let's just do some cuts. Alright, I'm going to delete this. Alright. And we're going to apply symmetry as well and turbo smooth. So turbo smooth, ice line display. We're going to use support loops in this situation. So pretty much what I would do is just just make a new edit poly. All right. So we're going to go ahead and just insert loops through here. We're also going to use the cut tool as well as swift loop. So if we use swift loop here, you can see it's not working because we have this bad topology here, this end gone. And if I, for example, ring this and use connect, it also won't go all the way. However, we can force it by selecting these edges and this one as well. And then connecting, you can see it's kind of forced in there. Then we can go ahead and use edge constraints, move to the left, then move to the right. So a lot of techniques we have to get these support loops. We can also remove this edge, get rid of the triangles. There we go. All right. We can also just cut through here, for example. And let's just fix up this and let's fix this up as well. All right, so that is the first method, support loops, and you get pretty nice results. So, pros and cons. Well, this is one of my favorite methods. It's the one I first started using and it remains one of my favorites to this day. What I like about this is how easy it is to achieve freeform results with this and how it can very easily modulate the smoothness just by moving edges closer or further apart. For example, here we have this pretty even crease, sharpness. But what happens if I just select this and use edge constraints, move this here, move this here, maybe move this a little bit as well. And as you can see now, it goes from sharp to smooth here. And we can add another edit modifier and it's just very fun to work with this and get all sorts of nice results here. Then for example, I can do this, I can insert an edge through here, I'm just going to move this down here. And you can see we just get all sorts of nice results just very easily here. So now we've got this, and so we can just continue to work with this and get very nice results very quickly here. And pretty much just with a few cuts, we will get creases here. We have this happening here. I'm going to move all this to the right. As you can see, just interesting shapes are appearing out of nowhere, and we can keep on working with this. We can just easily change the sharpness everywhere. So with this method, you can very easily get unrespected results. And so it's very good for happy accidents and a lot more interesting freeform modeling. You get a lot of interesting things happening here. So that is what I would say is one of the biggest pros. One of the biggest cons is, of course, you have to work with all these support loops. So you have to always just think about where they go. You can see in this situation, I inserted these because I want to have sharpness right here, but it also creates sharpness right here. So that's one thing you got to deal with when using this. Is that what do you do here? Well, we can try and do something very sloppy here. We can try and just remove this. But then we have this end gone here, and then we have this happening here. So that's one of the downsides of working with this method is that always having to manage the loops. And once you have a more complex mesh, you can get pretty chaotic managing all these loops. So that would have to be the biggest downside. But the upside, once again, is that it's very easy to create very nice freeform shapes and change how sharp it is just by doing a few quick cuts. If you're going to use this method, I recommend that you get acquainted using the cut tool a lot. It's pretty much one of the best ways to work with this method. I also want to go into customize and then preferences. Then you want to go into viewports and change the selection pixel radius. I think by default it's set to a much higher value, but I've got it set to five. And pretty much what this will change is how it will snap when you cut. So if I had a high radius, this cut that I did right here would have snapped the left, for example. But if you decrease it, you'll be able to get these cuts without it snapping. Because if you cut too closely, you notice how it just kind of snapped right there. So we need to actually lower the radius or what you need to do is zoom in and you will get more accurate cuts happening here. So just be sure to change that if it's snapping too close here. 
So support loops are also highly used in the industry. So for example, a lot of clients may work with a lot of studios may actually prefer to use support loops as opposed to in the future methods we're going to discuss in this video. All right, what I'm going to do here is just delete out of poly modifiers and I'll show you a different method. All right, now I will show you a different method. Just set this up here, all right. So what I would do for this is actually, let's apply a shell modifier first. All right, and symmetry, what we're going to do is use creaset. So I'm going to apply a crease set. I'm going to press 2 to go into edge, and I'm going to select this. What you can do to get more edges is to increase this value, or hold control, double click to add to this. All right, once you've got the ones you want, for example, you may or may not want this, you can then create a crease set right here and create the appropriate, set the appropriate sharpness, and then change from turbo smooth to open subdiv. All right, this is another great method for subdivision. And so what's great about this method is that we can have multiple presets here. For example, I'm going to select just a single edge and create a new set right here. And now all I need to do is just to change this number to change the sharpness here. So this can be great for situations when you're working for a client and they will say, okay, I want this to be sharper. Well, all I have to do is just increase this value. And there we go. All right, the downsides of this is that if you go back here and start editing things and start, for example, extruding and cutting in more, you will have to go back into Preset and you can right click, select Elements, and you will have to add this as well. So here I will need to, for example, reselect this, add this, and add this right here, and then just right click. You can select, add, subtract, or update. Update pretty much just replaces everything, so we're going to replace it with this. We could have also, for example, if I just press Control Z, we could have just selected this. And we could have just added that. All right. If you go back to edit poly and do a bunch of crazy edits, a lot of cuts, a lot of extrusions, when you go back to preset, it could be completely corrupted. You just kind of get random selections everywhere. So with this method, you really have to have things kind of ready. Once you've got everything modeled out, then you apply a preset. Once you don't want to do any more edits anymore. Instead of using preset, you can also simply put them in edit poly. You can manually select the edges right here using loop and various techniques. All right, and you can simply enter in a value right here. If at any point you want to extract those into a preset modifier, you just apply preset, you go into options, and then you auto generate. And you'll get them here. So, pretty much, you're going to extract the creased edges from Edit Poly and put them into a preset modifier for finer control. Because if you don't do this, you will have to constantly kind of reselect things. Or, for example, you can create selection set, I can turn one for example, then for example I can just do further things here, then I can just reselect that and there we go. But sometimes it can become corrupted as well as you do various operations. So the big downside to using presets is that you have to kind of reselect things, they'll become corrupted after you do various modeling operations. So right now, you see there's a blankness in the crease. That's because of a collection of different creases. So when you select two edges that have different crease values, it doesn't know what to enter in, so it just has a blank. So what you can do here is right-click to set them both to zero and then enter in another value right here. All right, a third option is to use the data channel modifier. So we're going to apply a data channel, kind of underread modifier. And pretty much what this would do is procedurally crease our objects. We have this nice preset here called Auto Edge Crease Weights. We just apply that, then we click on Load. It's gonna show up here. Pretty much what this would do is just give us an edge input, curve, scale, edge output. We can open this up to see what it's doing. We click on this. You can see the edge output is crease weights can replace that. So pretty much if I apply, let's say symmetry at a poly and then open subdiv, you can see the data channel is procedurally creasing the edges. And we can tell because if we turn on and off, this is what it's doing. So now we have a much more procedural method. We can go in here and change things like the scale or the curve. 
to pretty much determine how it will change this. So pretty much I'm going to press spacebar, that's my hotkey for show end result on off toggle. So I'm going to press that and I'm going to simply just change this. You can see how it ends up changing the creases as well. We can change the scale as well. This changes the sharpness. All right, so pretty much now with this, we have this very nice procedural method. I'm going to increase this to four for more sharpness. All right. And actually, let's say we don't want it to be at four or let's say we don't want it to be this sharp. Let's go here and change this to, let's say, maybe 0.2. Make this a little smoother here, maybe 0.25. If you don't want this psychedelic color, you can simply change the enable display right here. Pretty much the display is just giving you a color showing what it's doing, where it's having the most effects. And of course, you notice that in the sharpest areas, that's where it's the reddest, indicating that's where most of the sharpness is going. Anybody remember playing Perfect Dark and seeing that interesting, funny color mode? Alright, so with this, it depends on the edge right here. So for example, if we have this edge, it's going to make this sharp. One downside of this is that it doesn't know what to do about these side edges, so it kind of gives us this. And what that is, for example, is that when you apply shell, we get this happening here. Now, data channel knows what to do with all these edges because there's a sharpness there. But this one right here is not sharp. This is a perfectly flat situation, so it doesn't actually know what to do right here. That's one of the downsides of using this method, is that it doesn't quite know what sharpness to give this. So that's one of the downsides of this method. So that's why it's going to crease that, but then it will try to continue to subdivide around here, which will give us that result that you see. So right now, this is sharp, so it's going to sharpen that up. But notice how as I move this, it's going to unsharpen this, uncrease that. So you kind of get this nice procedural creasing where if you want it to be smooth, you can simply move your edge right here. And then once you move this, you'll kind of automatically sharpen things up. Look at that. If you don't want this result, you can go in here and even add a higher iteration here. And also another downside of using open subdiv with creases is that you really need to increase the number of iterations to get a good result. Because if it's too low, with turbo smooth, with support loops, you can get away with having, for example, two. But with open subdiv and the edge creasing, two looks pretty bad and then three looks pretty bad here. So you really need a much higher value to get a good result. So you can set it to be this, for example, in the viewport and then have it be six at render time. But this is a very good method to procedurally control that and to not worry about creases as you model here. One downside about this method is that you will get results like this. Notice how this is very straight here, and then we got this curve right here. Well, that's because if we look at this, if we look at what's happening here, these edges are sharp, which means they're going to get creased. However, this section is not sharp, which means it's going to remain smooth. And when those two things combine, you're going to get this happening here. We're going to get the sharpness here and the smoothness here. So. With all these methods, it's a good idea to understand what you're doing here and what you can get away with. So if you want this to work better, I recommend before doing this thing, before showing this out here, it's a good idea just to insert more loops through here using swift loop, hold down shift to apply set flow afterwards. And so when you do that, you're going to smooth this out here, adding more loops. And then when you extrude this, it's going to have a much easier time. Notice how now we get a much better result here. Now it's nice and consistent here without having the straightness in the curve going down here. These are the kind of things that you need to pick up on as you learn how topology works here. But you can see it gives you a very quick procedural workflow without to worry about support loops or going in here increasing and you, you can show to clients your results and your designs very quickly.
So just by doing a little bit of cutting here. So there's very minimum fixing of topology. You can see I had to fix things up here. I had to do a few cuts here. Sometimes when you get really bad end gone, you gotta fix those up. But notice for example here we have an end gone and it looks pretty fine. So there is a little bit of cleanup to do, but not too much with this method. All right, method number four is to use smoothing groups. So here what I would do is control A and clear the smoothing groups. And I will select this for example and set that to be two and this will be one. Now I'm gonna apply symmetry Turbo Smooth and Activate Smoothing Groups option. Once I do that, notice how it will become perfectly sharp here. So what you can do with this is to have one Turbo Smooth modifier with let's say two iterations and the second one with Smoothing Groups option off just to smooth things out a little bit and you will get nice results here as well. You can set up the Smoothing Groups through manually by selecting polygons or you can apply a smooth modifier, auto smooth, and simply change the threshold right here. The smaller this value is, the more differences, the small difference between the angles it will detect. So for example, notice what it's doing here. It's detecting this angle right here. But if we increase this value, it's gonna stop detecting that. Whereas if we decrease, it's gonna detect even more angles. You can see at 30, it detected this one, but not this one. Well, if we decrease this, it will detect that one as well. Or if you go if you go way too low, it's going to pretty much make every single face faceted, which you may want in some situations. But I think 30 is a good default value, maybe a little bit lower, maybe a little bit higher, depending on what you want. So this also gives us a very nice procedural workflow as well. You can help out this workflow by using support loops as well. You can see here, for example, I may like this. You can actually get good results here. For example, I like the smoothness here and then the transition and sharpness right here. But you can also go into smooth and decrease this to make this more uniform, like this, for example. You can go to Turbo Smooth, make this one, for example, three. And even sharper, or you can make it, for example, smooth one, or even smoothness, even more smoothness. All right, and that is four different ways to subdivide. So hopefully you now have a much more powerful modeling workflow in Arsenal Software DS Max. Thank you for watching and take care.